you guys, welcome back to another one. Today we are playing out one more, and thank you to Jespin Diskin for his support with me and my disc golf needs. Make sure to check out his website and his Facebook page. Post a lot of fun things, tournaments, leagues, products, all that kind of stuff. Make sure to check it out. So yeah, one more park is located uh, southwest St. Louis. It's a pretty nice course. A lot of, a lot of good scenery. Um, it's about a par 60, 6,322 feet. Uh, it's pretty, it's nice weather, but a little windy. I actually scratched that, very windy. Yes, yeah, so starting off on hole one, it's a par three, 241 feet. Um, it's a pretty uphill hole, so it's about 275. I have actually never played it in this location, so it's a different kind of alley you have to go through the trees. And a very, very early release there. Decent run there. I'm gonna tap in for a par. Hole two to par four, 453 feet. A little downhill, right, right to left shot. You just wanna get around that tree that the camera just walked under. But yeah, you wanna get around that tree and swing and then keep pushing towards the basket. There's OB left, go on or over the car path. There are also a few trees right off the tee that you have to avoid. So yeah, right before this, you can see all the water right there. That is not supposed to be there. That's just like a little pond that sort of came with the rain. Hmm, nasty chain out left there. Yeah, so the OB goes all the way up the fairway. Hole three, par four, 460 feet. This one is sort of, never mind, scratch that. It's uh, way different than hole two, but um, yeah, you just wanna throw a straight shot. Try to maybe pass those trees right there. Uh, get a look at the basket. Yeah, so after you get past those trees at about like 350, about 350, it's like a uphill shot after that. So yeah, I'm just flipping up a fairway trying to make it glide past the trees, but I sort of hit the branch right there on the bottom. And I have about 100, 120 foot shot. Wind sort of helped me uh, drop the disc right down in the basket. Hole four is a par three, 324 feet. Again, I have not seen the basket in this position. Usually it's a little bit more left, but this one, I like this basket a lot. Cause there's a straight gap and there's a little bit of a spike hyzer gap. Or not, not spike, but a big hyzer. I'm sort of going for the spike hyzer, but the wind's not letting it push all the way left. So yeah, there you can see the straight gap to the basket. I probably should have taken that. I might have gotten a little closer, but uh, I do like that shot. Big air ball there. Not a good wind to come back to too, because I believe that's a headwind. Nice putt, barely sneaks over the cage. Hole five, it is a par four, 480 feet. 
And uh, this is one of my favorite holes because you can just swing a hyzer, just pump one around those trees, try to get past that big tree right there, and then you'll have any sort of any sort of look at the basket. There is, although, OB on the road deep, but I believe it's very hard to get past that. It's about a hundred. Hundred at wait, sorry. OB is pretty far behind the basket. I'll throw my new DD3. Good line. You can see the, the wind sort of lifter right there. Gets around the tree and that'll be an upshot to the basket. Yeah, so it sort of goes uphill after this. Pretty close putt and yeah, this course is just filled with beautiful scenery. Lots of trees and uh, hilly greens. Hole six, par three, 225 feet. This is, I believe, the shortest hole in the course. I might be wrong, but uh, yeah, I really like this hole because it's just a stay and bounce hole. I believe the creek's OB and are over it. And then the car path on the left right there is OB too. Yeah, just throw a hyzer along the right side there. Uh, comes to a nice stop next to the basket and barely sneaks over the cage. Hole seven, par three, 348 feet. This one's also a nice hole because I don't like this position because it cuts off a lot of shots. So you sort of have to just go over the top or throw a roller because all of those trees just block any sort of air shot to the basket. And there is OB right on or over the sidewalk and road. So yeah, I just throw a hyzer there and didn't get quite enough distance to get all the way to the basket. So I'll be having a jump putt. Did not throw it high enough and that'll be a tapping. Hole eight, part three, 311 feet. This is a little bit on the left side. Uh, this is, I believe, the farthest position. But yeah, uh, this is a nice hole because it's just a nice ante. Or you can go pretty much straight at it, hoping to get through those trees. There's OB left on over the car path. So I'm gonna try to throw an Anheuser with my MD3. Uh, sort of straight into the ground, but I will have an upshot to the man. So it's sort of windy, so I'm gonna try to just throw a mini grenade with a A3, but it gets a nasty skip and that'll be a not easy putt. Well, the putt is sort of easy, I just missed it. So. Now on to hole nine. It is a par three, 324 feet. Plays more like 380, because it's way uphill. Starts to flatten out and then keeps going out for another like good 80 feet. Yeah, you want to avoid those bushes right there in the middle, that tree on the right side, and you also want to avoid the big tree down the back side of the fairway. I'm trying to throw my FD3 on a little bit of a hyzer line, but yeah, sort of hits the bush. My upshot got smacked down by the wind. Not a good run from that circle two area, but a nice tap in part in that wind. All right, now on to the first hole in the back nine. Hole 10, par four, 517 feet. This is one of the longer holes in the course uh, because of the terrain and the uh, wind and the OB. So yeah, there's OB left on or over the car path and OB right. And I guess, yeah, OB deep. 
go on over the guard path. Here you just want to pump one straight down the middle. Doesn't matter exactly where it is, you just want a shot that's unobstructed. Yeah, that's not a very good tee shot right there, but I do have a line. Sort of an Anheuser pig shot, trying to flex it out near the basket. It's a decent shot and pretty decent putt, I would say. Hole 11, par 4, 620 feet. This one is a bomb hole. You can throw it pretty far off the tee here. If you do, you will be rewarded with an easier upshot to the basket. Um, around the basket, the OB on the right and left sorts the snake in and uh, close in near the basket. So yeah, the fairway starts to get way thinner the farther up you get. I'm gonna throw my D1, a little too low, but I'll have a scrappy shot to throw. So yeah, I gotta sort of bend down on this branch. And decent looking shot. Way, way better result than I ex expected. Uh, yeah, almost went OB. Luckily stayed in. Now on to hole twelve. Par 3, 217 feet. This one is a little bit of an Anheuser or Heiser. You can approach it anyway, but it was a little bit of a skippy green on certain days. And right here, the wind was blowing fast as it was today. I had to an Anheuser with my roller table pig, and it sort of turned into a rollover or roller. Luckily, it didn't go with me, but uh, yeah, I just had an easy upshot to the basket. Hole 13 it is a par 3, 236 feet. Um, just a pretty simple hyzer. You can throw a hyzer as a lefty and a righty. Uh, it's basically the same shot. Yeah, it's pretty downhill, so you can just throw a putter or a slow mid range. It'll all do the same thing. But yeah, there's a couple of trees right by the basket. Pretty decent shot there, just a little deep and skip a little bit past the basket. Well, 14, it's a par 3, 355 feet. This one, a little valley down the middle of the fairway, and then it starts to snake back up. And the basket's just over the hill, so it's a very tricky tee shot. Not disco. Try to rip my tactic, but not nearly far enough. Probably should have thrown a mid range. I'm trying to throw a nice upside down shot. I'm trying to float it down by the basket so it don't go deep. This is a very tough putt because I'm putting straight into a headwind. And I'm very amazed that that went in. I sort of turned it over. Hole 15, part 3, 348 feet. This one, you can throw a hyzer, righty or backhand, or sorry, lefty backhand. Uh, but yeah, there's just that one tree to contend with. Otherwise, it's just pretty over and over. The basket is also up on a little mound. Try to rip my Ricky Evader, or sorry, Enforcer, and uh, a little short because of the wind. Not a good run, but it'll be another par. Full 16, 
par 3, 258 feet. At this point in time in the round, I would say this is the biggest right to left one you've had. So yeah, this is going to be a very tough shot. Especially with that OB behind it. Yeah, you can barely see it there. You can see that I threw that drive way right and it came all the way back a little left of the basket. You can see there this awesome action shot. <laughs> I still I did made it across though. Can't say I didn't. That's parkour right there. Hole 17, par 4, 503 feet. Yeah, you just wanna push a drive up left here so you can have a shot to the basket. I feel like every time I play this hole, I make it harder than it should be. Just cause the drive looks intimidating with the tunnel shot. Yeah, you can see here I throw way high, even though it's just a simple straight shot. Fairway's like 50 feet wide. I don't know why I had a problem with that. And then I sort of turn over my mid-range shot, and the wind caught it, so the turnover just made it worse. And I'm left with this long approach shot. That'll be another tap in for par. Got the par train going. All right, now on to the final hole, hole 18, par three, 339 feet. This one's just a simple hyzer, trying to push it along the right side, trying to hyzer it back out towards the left side. That patch of trees right there. Trying to get close for two. You can see there that dirt on my shirt. And that awesome parkour. You can even set highlight reel. Trying to end it on a good note, but a little left. And that'll be another par. So yeah, I got a couple birdies at the beginning, and then a couple bogeys, and it's where I hopped on the par train there the last nine. Thank you for watching. That was probably my best round up here at. All right. Now, thank you again to Jespin Diskin. Make sure to check him out on his Facebook page and his website. Thank you. Make sure to watch all my other videos and see ya.